Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering WTG Transform 2019. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's third year at WTG Transform 2019, which is the Winslow Technologies Group, their user conference, a longtime Compellent customer, of course, Compellent, bought by Dell, Dell bought EMC, so it's now the Dell EMC user event, and uh, to help me kick off a day of uh, content where we're going to be talking to some of the WTG uh, executives, some of their customers, and some of their partners is first time guest on the program, Joe Batista, who's a cre he's the chief creatologist at Dell Technologies. Uh, Joe, appreciate you making it all the way in from the suburbs uh, to come here to downtown Boston and in the shadow of Fenway. It was a long haul this morning with no traffic at 5.30, quick 35 minutes in. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, as I say for the, the people at Dell, it's about the distance from Boston to where we live as it is to go from Austin to Round Rock. So, there we go. You know, it's, it's similar types of things. So, Joe, I have to start. Creatologist. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I, I did a little bit of reading and, uh, you know, having watched your keynote, it's, you know, sparking that creativity. So I, I love the idea of it. You've had this title for quite a while since before you were at Dell. Just give us a little bit about background of, you know, what you do and, you know, why you're qualified to do it. Well, <laughs> It's kind of a it's kind of, it's a fun brand, yeah. but literally it sits at the nexus of business and technology, and uh, my job simply is to help IT reimage the business because now every company is a technology company. So what does that look like? So I get involved in all sorts of really cool problems, opportunities that customers are facing by re-imaging IT. Well, it, it's funny that you say re-image, because when I did my history, the oldest thing, I found some article from the 90s talking about somebody from Polaroid uh, that, that wow. had that title. Um, and I was actually talking to some of the young people in the office, and they were like, everybody's using Polaroids these days. It's cool, it's Isn't retro. It cool? And yeah. they're doing it. So what's old is new again. You know, uh, everything comes back together. Um, Joe, luckily, you know, our, our industry, I mean, nothing changes, right? You know, it's the same now as it was 10 years ago, 100 years ago, uh, you know, all just going to the factory and uh, pumping things out, no? Stu, you know, I've been around for a long time, <laughs> and in the old days, we had swim lanes, right? You know, you thought about certain vendors, they were in swim lanes. Now, today, with the influx of cash, as I was talking about, and the level of innova uh, innovation cycle time, and how the industry has become more fragmented with lots of products, the complexity index has increased exponentially. Mm -hmm. And the velocity around that complexity is even more accelerated. So no, it hasn't gotten easier, it's gotten more difficult. Yeah, I, it, fascinating. Actually, I just heard a segment on our national public radio station here in Boston talking about that one of the biggest changes in how people think over the last few decades is we're better at recognizing patterns. It used to be we could be an expert on something and do our thing. You know, we know the old trope is, well, you know, my grandfather, you know, worked at a company for 30 years and did his same thing today. Things are changing constantly. You know, we didn't have you know the the, the power of a supercomputer in our pocket. That's you right. know, ten years ago. Uh, you know, let let alone uh, even older. So, um, you know, w this is a user conference. So, you know, what are they to do? I mean, if if I understand, if I'm you know making a decision today for my business, and oftentimes that decision is something I need to live with for a while. How do I make sure that I'm making the right decisions? That's going to keep me, you know. It, it, you know, keeping up with the competition and keeping my business moving forward as things constantly change. Yeah, so um, there is no easy answer to that question. There's a couple of thoughts, and as I said in the, um, the presentation, you got to look at these vectors that uh, impact the trajectory of the thinking. And I love the Peter uh, Drucker quote, right? If you're using yesterday's logic, you're probably going to get in trouble. You have to rethink the logic. And the example I gave was the high jumper and how we did high jumping before and after yeah, 1968. The flop, absolutely. So, so the question becomes, what are those vectors? And I went through some of those vectors to help people think about, okay, I do my analysis on technology, that's all good. And uh, at Dell Technologies, we've got a huge portfolio of technology, but how do you think about the perimeter about how those things change over a depreciation cycle? So I was trying to add a little bit more color in their thought processes. And I, I got a lot of post questions afterwards and a lot of engagement, so it seemed to resonate with the field. And I'll tell you what, the thing that they liked the most was the business conversation of IT. Yeah. They're like, you know, we don't do that enough. Yeah, uh, right, I mean, you know, when, when, when we look at the successful companies today, it is not, you know, we've been talking for years, you know, does IT matter? Is IT just a cost center? And it needs to be, if IT isn't 
helping the business drive forward and responding to what the business needs, uh, you know, IT can be replaced. That's yep. where we got shadow IT. It's IT can't be the no or the slow. Uh, it needs That's to be right. when the business says we need to go, you know, get on board and drive. Um, I love one of the analogies you used is, you know, in this world of complexity, there's so many things out there. You know, when I've worked with, you know, enterprises and small companies, you, you look at their environments and it's like, oh my God, it's this heterogeneous mess. You know, how do we standardize things? How do we make things easier? Um, you had a fun little analogy talking about space. Uh, maybe, maybe you okay, could share that with was good. Yeah, I always try to use visuals as much yeah. as possible so I highlight what the challenge is. So the, um, the challenge was, um, oh, I actually have it in my pocket. <laughs> so um, I pulled this out yeah. and basically what it is, if you look at the International Space mm -hmm. Shuttle, yep. <laughs> that's the only thing that they need to fix anything on the Space Shuttle, a 7 16th inch socket or the millimeter version of it, I can't read because I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> to fix anything. So imagine if IT had one tool to fix anything. That's Nirvana, but that's not reality because I have tool fatigue. So I need to get to that simplicity. It's glasses law. Remember, every 25% increase in function is a 100% increase in complexity, and that's public enemy number one for us. All right, so Joe, you hopped on board the, the Dell family relatively recently. Uh, when most people think of Dell, it's, well, you know, Dell PCs, you know. To talk to my, you know, my parents, they're like, they know Dell computers, they've used them forever. You talk to most people, oh, you know, Dell servers in life. You talked a lot about in your presentation, software is eating the world. Correct. So give, a, give us how, you know, where Dell fits in that software is eating the world picture. Well, I, what I can tell you though is I was absolutely amazed when I did my due diligence about all the innovation that happens in this company. Phenomenal, not only about the hardware, but the software. And I think actually, uh, Jeff said it best, I think we have more software engineers now than we have hard, hardware engineers. So the pivots there, we're, we're pivoting our, our talent to the software, but it's the innovation that's in this company. And I think I kind of rattled off a couple of statistics by how much we spend, the quantity of IP that we have, and I think customers are amazed at that innovation, but the supercharger on it is, okay, how does the innovation apply to the business mechanics of the company, and what value do you uh, extract from that? And that's where the whole language and conversation usually happens with us. I will tell you though, I'm really excited that Dell Technology is kind of doubling down on business outcomes. They're really trying to change the culture and helping customers understand what the technology means. Yeah, uh, one of the things that struck me, I've been to this event now for a couple of years, and you know, there's a lot of product discussion here. You know, when you get down to the channel, it's like, okay, great. You know, I'm doing a server refresh, I'm looking at things like hyperconverge, you know, what am I doing in my network? You know, when you up level things a little bit, you know, when I went to Dell World, it's like, yeah, we hear about the venture, uh, you know, activity that's happening around and things like IoT coming down the pipe, but how does that trickle down to the customers that you talk an event here? It, it's great to talk about innovation, but, you know, I got to run my business. You know, what, 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 you know, where does Dell fit in that picture for yeah, customers? Yeah, you, you got, well, as a customer, you got to do both, yeah. right? So there's, there's got to be a shift because now I have to think differently, right? I know how to do feature analysis and benefit analysis of a point in time product, but what's the periphery of activities that impacting, impacting that decision? Does that architecture scale? Uh, what are the economics around that? So you need to think about all those things, and I think it's just a journey for not only us as a vendor, but also for customers as well. Okay, so you're relatively new into Dell. Uh, I, I want to ask you, you gave a great quote uh, in, in your presentation from, from Jack Welsh. Uh, he said, if the rate of change outside the company is greater than inside the company, the end is near. Yeah, well I would say so, you're toast. So, uh, you know, explain to us the, the pace of change inside of Dell Technologies. Well, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a big question. I mean, the pace of change varies by organization, by business unit. I really can't comment on you know, individual business units, but I will say though, there's a definite desire to understand where customer centricity is there. So what's the customer trying to do? And then how do we satisfy the customer request? As a matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, and this was amazing, because I was with the customer the other day, you know, Stevie Awards, which are customer satisfaction, which we double down on customer satisfaction. We have a customer, chief customer officer with Karen, and we just won um, 15 Stevie Awards, which is about customer satisfaction. So I think there's a slow shift but there's a real focus on customer centricity for us. The velocity will get there, but if you put the customer at the center, like we do, that's a winning strategy. Yeah, well, yeah, we know Karen Quintos quite well, uh, you know, culture and, and working with the customers, uh, you know, quite do. Uh, you talked about the, the portfolio of companies in Dell. Uh, we know Dell Boomi quite well. We've done their event. Uh, uh, yeah, and, Boomi. Uh, and the team real well. And, uh, 
you know, VMware is no slouch in the industry. No slouch. Uh, I, I've had the, one of the pleasures of my career is, you know, I started working with VMware when they were like a hundred person company to watch them grow. And uh, Pat Gelsinger, I think, was just named like the number one, number two, you know, CEO to work for. Uh, you by know, employees. By, by employees from Glassdoor. Yes, so, did, uh, yeah. you know, no, no slouch uh, on the, the Benjamin family. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations uh, to the, the Dell family on yeah, all that Thank process. you very much. All very right, exciting. Well. Joe Batista, uh, thank you so much for joining me here at the WTG uh, Transform 2019. Uh, pleasure to catch up with you. I appreciate the opportunity. All right, so we're here with customers, uh, the executives, and digging into all the industry trends. Of course, uh, check out thecube.net for where we will be, and uh, thank you as always for watching theCUBE.